So basically what I'm going to need you to do is take this light and go into the camper and there we go. Dang, that's bright. And then, so you take the light, go into the camper and I'm going to go on top and I'm going to see how the, uh, see those pinholes? Mm -hmm. So I just need you to hold the light up around that whole galvanized sheet okay and i'm gonna go on the top and i'm gonna see if there's extra pinholes that i can see that i don't know about it looks like it looks like just in the one area okay that's good once here give me the light I'm gonna see something here. I don't know if this will do anything. I got this idea from from Daryl. No, I can't see anything other than these pinholes here. Okay, okay. Wow, it's still dripping wet there from when we were cleaning it off. Oh, and look at this. That's all the residue that ran off. From making it all nice and nice and clean up here. Look at that. No residue left at all. Thanks to the help from Armando with that. Would have taken me a lot longer to do that all by myself. This is all of the stuff that we used so far. We're almost done though. Just the interior left to do. Which won't take nearly as long because look how clean that is. I do want to clean it just for maximum sealability. Is that a word? Sealability? I have an idea for sealing everything up nice and tight. So I want to get the gouge, of course. I know I have another gouge over here. I think it's right there. And uh, thanks to the light check last night, we know that our. Uh, pinholes don't really exceed what we can see in the daylight. Thank you, Daryl, for that idea. It was a good idea. So we don't need to worry about going super crazy with the interior part. But anyway, these are, uh, these are a dry cleat joint. That's what Armando was calling it yesterday anyway. I imagine, hey Penny, What's going on? Hey, how you doing? There you go. Do you like the new, the new, uh, the new rig? What do you figure? <laughs> anyway, uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, it's a dry cleat system. I imagine they call it that as opposed to a wet cleat system or whatever. I don't know if they would call it that ever, but they don't use any caulking compound or anything to hold it together. It's just held together with uh, friction with uh, what I imagine is called a C channel. I know that there's a C channel and an S channel and all sorts of other things in uh, tin bashing applications. Armando is a, uh, HVAC guy, so I imagine he does a lot of that. Um, is there mice in there? I don't think so. The good thing about this is there is there is no mice issues with this. But if there was, we got someone who can take care of that. Right, Penny? Um, sorry, you're making me lose my train of thought there, Penny Loafers. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, how this works with... Uh, the two, the three pieces of metal is the two pieces of sheet metal. Put this down. If you can imagine, they are lapped like this. So this piece of galvanized and this piece of, which by the way, I'm not sure why they use two different types of metal for the same roof, uh, especially since with like rain and snow and whatnot, you can have electrolysis issues. Doesn't seem like there is any of that going on here actually. Um, maybe because it's galvanized. That probably makes sense. And I imagine the galvanized 
uh, prolonged its life with the rust issues, but since they did use steel, it did eventually rust through. It is a thicker gauge than the tin, so there's probably some application that makes sense. Probably actually because the roof has this contour in it and they needed it to be, they needed it to be strong enough to bear weight, maybe, in that weird shape. I don't know. That's besides the point. Anyway, you got this piece of galvanized steel lapped over like this, this piece of tin lapped over like this, right? You probably have them decently close together. Then you take the C channel that's on top like this and you slide it over from one end all the way to the other and that basically holds together like a hook system. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good explanation or not, uh, but uh, that is how, that's how it works, just with some friction. It's a simple joint, but it's a good joint. And um, they're not supposed to leak, but they have been leaking because I've been, uh, as you can see the residue on the inside. Oh, are you kidding me? Please have, have enough in there. Oh no. Look at this, last can. Oh, we're cutting it close here, guys. There we go. There we go. Nice and clean there, and I think the other dry cleat, yeah, underneath this. Not too worried about them. They're not supposed to leak. The reason why they have been leaking, if you could tell by the, the residue, sneaking through is uh because i was using a pressure washer um if i hadn't used the pressure washer it probably wouldn't have leaked through into the interior i'm not 100 percent sure but judging by the rot that we had in here all of it was just concentrated to right here yeah. in this area yeah that's yeah there's water in there probably Another so, water in there. But. Basically, my theory is that these are probably fine. Interesting. I've never used this stuff before. Okay, while that. Oh, I should probably do this too. It says it's exterior, but uh, we're going to use it in the interior. It says that it takes between a quarter of an hour, for some reason it says a quarter, not 15 minutes, to two whole hours to dry. So that gives us lots of time to perhaps clean up our demo mess from the last vlog. So I'll grab the vacuum cleaner. Last vlog was more so focused on getting the uh, whole inside demoed so we could see what kind of damage uh, there was to the bones of the of the unit. Turns out not that bad, but bad enough that we need to repair. So this vlog, we are going to focus on uh, repairing all of the damage when it comes to like the ants, the rot, um, the broken windows, the bad vent, all sorts of things like that. But first up, we got our we got our vacuum cleaner here. What? What the heck? What the heck? It's already, it's already all vacuumed in here. No, uh, vacuuming is boring, so I didn't want to show that. But uh, there we go. We got it all swept and vacuumed out, more or less. Managed to get the stove out the door. Uh, I just had to remove the door and the knobs and turn it sideways, and I. Got it out with the help of Ashley's uncle. Oh no, just, just. Oh wow, that was close. Him and her aunt are over picking raspberries, so it was good timing. And then I also took out the, uh, the old water tank and scrapped that. I will end up replacing that with like a, a poly one or something like that. Um, unfortunately though, it was leaky and uh, it's rotted the floor 
um, that I didn't notice before. But also there's some here too, so that's probably just from leakiness elsewhere. Who knows exactly? Um, what do you think? It's a little bit of work yet, but it, it's getting there. I think you're going to replace the floor, right? Uh, I think what I'm going to do, depending on what the frame looks like, I'll just cut a section out and then I'll replace it with a piece yeah, of plywood. Yeah. And then same with here. Um, I think I'm going to just take off the front skin and the back skin. Hmm. Yeah. Hey. We'll see. Hey, so those bracing that, that holds it down, the shell down. Oh, the framing do? there? Yeah. yeah. What do you do there? Well, I'm just going to put in a new bottom plate. So once I put in the new decking, right, then I'll put in... You'll have to anchor it down somehow, right? Oh, you mean because of... Uh... Because of the, this, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, you don't think that'll hold anything anymore? Or? No, I think that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know so those ones look okay, but man, like the rest of them, whoa. Yeah, this one's doing a lot, <laughs> totally. Thank God that one, that one held. <laughs> so you have to get some kind of anchors, I guess, eh? Yeah, that's easy though. I'll just yeah. bolt it down. Like these ones here are good. I can just see what, what those ones are. But uh, yeah, obviously, this isn't. Yeah, because you kind of need those. Like, you know, they, they go down the road, and all of a sudden you lose your hold. Down the highway. Yeah. It's all gone. So I'll just see what's what's down. There. Wow, that is soggy. Super soggy. I'm sure that uh, you could get a cup of water out of that. Wow. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, the frame is steel, which is good. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Well, it's a lot of skeleton work. It's, George can do it. Yep, yeah. Not today, okay? When are you gonna get it done? Thursday. Oh! We'll get it done by Thursday. <laughs> we, we don't need to have it completely done, we just need to have it usable. Yeah. Yeah. Four walls back. Yeah. Floor, walls, bed. So, yeah. A lot to do, but one thing at a time. All right, let's see here. I want to make sure I have a big enough piece here. That should be good. This stuff is dry now, so we're ready for the next little bit here. Peel this off. Looking at all those pinholes. There, I think that will cover all of them. Get them there nice and tight like so. There we go. Now to do the other side. stuff is basically just a waterproof membrane sealer deal and it's really good for uh, sealing up for vapor barrier and air barrier excellent and I almost forgot this little gouge there there we go So they're all looking good on the inside. And now that I'm done the inside, does this not have like a rattle ball in here? Does this not need to be shaken? I don't know. This is a rust converter. As you can tell on the top here, we have some rust and I wanna do my best to help it not spread any further than it is. So this stuff is apparently uh, good for that. Basically stops the rust, according to its own label, and then uh, creates a, a primer of sorts that you can paint over. Let's see how well it works. Apparently it's supposed to turn it black, I think. So before, 
converted and then obviously you can paint it after converts rust to a paintable primer on all metal surfaces we shall see I think that should be good. I don't know. I've never used this stuff before. Like I said, we shall see. Now, while that's converting, I don't know how long it takes. We are going to work on remedying our lots of rot. Of course, I grabbed the wrong drill. That was gonna be a perfect transition. These are Robbie's. And this, <laughs> everything else is this. Except for the front here. Oh well, I need to take off the side too. I meant to do this. I mean, I really did mean to, but. There we go. Some of these are holding on to absolutely nothing. Where the ants got them. Water trap. That would probably be why the floor is rotten. There's water in there. I don't know how well that shows up. Is that the original color or? Oh, maybe. Why is it like cream colored? Yeah, I don't know. The Duke. Yeah, who knows? So I bet you they just put that on, right? For uh, like just to, uh, cause they got all beat up. Yeah, like a rock guard. Cause like that is, Really damaged. I think we'll put on a new one and one that won't hold moisture because there was a lot of moisture. I don't know if you can tell, but there's 
moisture in there, so. Yeah, no, exactly, because this is this is the piece of trim. Holding it. No, it was it just uh, it doesn't lap like that. Overlaps this, so any moisture would go down there. Like it, yeah, it was siliconed, but that wasn't good enough. Well, this side especially was wet. It's mostly dry now, but that is soggy in there. Oh, I still got a couple nails. All right, see you guys. We're gonna go okay, now I think I may have to undo the window as well. Not a big deal. Piece. Nobody walk over here. That's crazy. On this side, we got rot as well. Look at all that. Are you trapped, bud? Look at all of them. Hmm. Well, sorry boys, or girls, or whatever ants are. Some of each. I am taking your home away. Cause this is gonna be my home away from home. <laughs> and it's <laughs> too lame, too lame. Too lame, okay. That's not exactly what I wanted to do. Hmm. I'm trying to get it so I can pull this off. These things just like embed their little jaws into you and just bite you. Luckily, I'm not allergic to whatever type of ant this is. They uh, are maybe carpenter ants because they're in the walls of uh, the wood. But uh, I thought carpenter ants had had wings. 
and I mean obviously some carpenter ants have wings but I guess some carpenter ants don't these are like red with like a black abdomen and these ones I find always bite but I oh look at that I couldn't even pull them off all right they're taking them this way Yeah, you know what's kind of crazy? This is like the hive mentality type thing because just the other day they were taking them this way as well. Oh really? Mm-hmm. They kind of have like a handoff going off here. They're taking, wait, what happened just there? They just folded that guy in half. That was weird. He's bringing them back. What just happened? As you can see, they're coming and going from within this hole right here where the trailer hitch tongue part comes out of the, the framing. And they're carrying their buddies, which I don't really get it, but for some reason, some of them are, are they volunteering to get balled up and carried? I don't know. But anyway, they're coming from there, right? Coming down the jack. You can see that guy's carrying someone, right? And then from there, they're moving all the way over to there, which is probably difficult to see at the moment. I can see it with my eyes, but it's probably hard to see on screen. But if I zoom in here, you can see there's a guy there carrying someone, carrying, moving on, all right? And you can kind of see them just there's another guy carrying someone. There's a different kind of ant following him. But they seem to be moving that way. I continue on. You can see them kind of around here, right? They're kind of going around the tree. And then they go up into here. And it's kind of hard to see them once they get into this heavier bush but if I stay still long enough you know I can see I can see them and they seem to be moving over into the grass and beyond I'm not sure exactly where they're going but this is exactly why I don't poison ants they are easy to move well if it's not dangerous, of course. Try not to poison anything that you don't need to, you know, for your own safety. Um, but if it doesn't regard your safety, then you can usually just let nature do nature stuff. I think that's kind of cool. Now, if this was in my house, and they, I obviously can't just do the same thing I did here with my house, but, you know. So do you think they're taking them into one of the trees? Uh, could be. Could be. I'm not sure. It'd probably have to be a dead tree. But, uh, yeah. I noticed that the comments in the last video said that they'd go into the house or the shop. But uh, if they went into the shop, that would just give us uh, a reason to tear it down faster to build the new one. <laughs> if it went into the house, well, that would suck. But they're not going that way. Let's see if this will take these out. Uh, I don't want to destroy this because I need it as a template. Okay, what is... 
Wow. That is not good. Get off of me. Huh, I thought it would be thicker than that. Before? Yeah. Why does it have to be like? I guess. Oh, I see. Okay, so the the deck or the the frame is steel and wood. And the wood of this part of the frame is is rotten. Hmm. Well, the rot, obviously, I'm not I'm not, I'm not sure what to think. <laughs> uh, okay, so, goes, starts there, goes all the way back to here, and all the way to here, and all the way to there. When I was feeling this earlier, it was quite wet, which it still is, and I think that's that bottom, that bottom layer that we saw here, this stuff right here. That's holding a lot of moisture, it's not, not the best stuff to use. I'm not sure why they would use that, but uh, they did. Then it comes here, then we have a little bit right here, which wouldn't be that big of a deal. Whoa, we're moving. It was like lifting off. Let go? <laughs> okay, note to self. Without the front end, you're very front light. Very back heavy? I don't know. When when you when you go back there, yeah. don't do it. <laughs> I guess we won't be able to keep this wall an open feature. Oh, it's a nice like airflow feature. Nice airflow. <laughs> like a like an airstream, right? right. <laughs> like an airstream. <laughs> oh man, dumb joke. Uh, it's it's like the right color on the inside. Um, okay. I'm thinking here, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking here. Is this a stupid idea? Is it a stupid idea? Since there's already so much damage that we didn't first see, I think it's fair to change plans a little bit, but I'm thinking, do we want to, do we want to just like tear it all down and rebuild it? Lightning and wind. Oh, that was the transformer blowing up. <laughs> we're about to have a we're about to have a storm here, guys. Don't blow away, trailer. Please don't blow away. Yeah, I might have gotten that on camera. I'm not sure though. What's that? Okay. <laughs> 